All right, guys, we're going to do something that uh, I've been very remiss about on this entire project, and that is actually drawing something out. So what we have, we are designing our queen posts. So this right here is going to be the reference face facing to the outside of the building. This right here is going to be what's pointed to the inside of the building. Now, as you can see... I am doing a uh, big through tenon. We're going to do this Dutch style on this one. And that's going to be all the way through, but that's going to be a big through mortise there. Two by eight through mortise. It's also going to be centered in the uh, post. We're going to have a five inch tenon on top. That's what the uh, purling plate's going to attach to. Down here, this is just, just showing that we're going to have a brace mortise, a hidden mortise on the other side of this. And those are just uh, construction lines to show it. Now so over here, you going to see that's where a brace is going to go. And that's going to uh, be the purlin plate brace to the clean post. And we're going to go a 30 inch by 30 inch layout. And this actually gets measured at 30 inches because there's going to be a half inch housing for the purlin plates. Right here, we're going to do a full one inch housing, one inch all the way around. I'm not doing an angled one like we did on the tie beams, but that's going to be for the queen pulse ties coming through. And keep in mind, remember, we are going to have a we're going to have a big through mortise all the way through this. So, give you guys an idea what's going on. It's going to be from this measurement right here, from this shoulder where that uh, purlin plate's going to sit. To the floor is going to be 10 feet and then we're going to have a three inch stub tendon that goes into the floor i'm going to cheat and i'm going to be using fasteners to uh, hold these queen posts into the floor i'm not going to peg them but they will be uh, tenons so there we have it let's lay this thing out and uh, continue on all right let's get some of this done guys now we've got it drawn out now we've got it figured out now I will tell you, I did go through already and do some of this. I laid quite a bit of it out already. But, uh, so now we're just going to connect the dots. All that good stuff. Get our pencil sharpened. Okay. This is the fun part. I enjoy laying this stuff out. So, reference face, adjacent face. This one is good and square. This is fresh off the mill. I'm using this for a wall post because it, the knots aren't really big in it, but there's enough of them that I would rather use it for a wall post instead of uh, instead of trying to use it for a plate member or a horizontal member. Remember what I said uh, here a short while ago in the one of the videos that. Uh, you want your best stuff for your vertical, or your, excuse me, your horizontal members. So what we're going to do, we're going to lay this tenon out. Now this, uh, this tenon's a 2x2 two two layout. The nice thing about these being the 8x8s, uh, eight the best part is my saw, I can cut this from both sides and get the whole thing. Right here, this is going to be a big through mortise. Like I said, we plan to do the uh, Dutch style tenons on this. But what I want to do with this, remember this is the reference face. This is pointed to the outside of the building. I want, I want this to be totally through it. But I still want to measure my center I want to measure it from the outside of the building because this is a 16th inch over 8 inches. So in order for everything to follow through right, I still want to measure this as if it's 8 inches from this reference face. And that is going to be the same for all of your framing, all of it. So let's see. Now something else you want to watch with your knots, especially with a bandsaw mill. And I don't know if you have the same issue with a swing blade mill. I would love to try a swing mill out sometime. But right now it's just not in the cards. But when you have a piece where you have a lot of knots, especially if you have big knots, 
And keep in mind that it's sometimes with a band mill that when that blade hits those knots, that suck that sucker's gonna move on you. And what's gonna happen is it's not a big deal, but it does throw your timber off a little bit around the knots. Not the whole thing, but around the knots. Of course, I had to plan that right into a knot back her head. But it shouldn't be in there that deep. fall over all right guys hope you enjoyed this one uh so we got a queen post pretty well wrapped up i just have to cut the tenons on both ends and we can put this one to bed there are uh, only nine more to go with these so it's not too bad um so anyway i started putting the information up uh some uh, more in-depth instruction on the website there's an article in there i've got to do another one um just trying to get the basics out there of doing one of these and the steps you need to do to plan one out. So we'll continue on with that series on the website at tradesmanoffgrid.com and uh, we'll keep going with that. But anyway, had a real good weekend, good good time with the wife and kids. I uh, got some great pictures. I'll throw some up at the end of the video. And this cat acts like I feed him or something. I don't feed you. That's the boss's job. The thing about cats, they only come up to you when they want something. They always want something. They're kind of like my kids. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.